All right, welcome to Saints on Cinema. This is Tim Wild. And I'm Josh Edlow. That is Josh Edlow. And today on our Revelations episode, we are going to be watching the new Christopher Robin trailer. I saw a teaser trailer, I think, and I don't know if it's the same trailer, but we're going to see. We're going to tell you our first impressions or second impressions. We're going to show you, tell you some impressions of what we have on this awesome video revealing this exciting new adventure from Winnie the Pooh. Let's see what we got. We've called an emergency meeting this weekend. I promised my wife and daughter I'd take them away this weekend, sir. We need to cut 20%. You promised these people good jobs. And I thought you'd do anything for this company. Well, have a good time. That's the trailer. That's the one I saw. That's a teaser, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, I have a good thing in my mind about it. I have a bad thing in my mind out of that. I have a, I have a good thing. There's something about it that I'm excited about, and there's something about it I'm not excited about. Number one that I'm really excited about is Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor is a phenomenal actor, not just because he was Obi Wan Kenobi and I love Star Wars. He's a good actor. And I really love him. And he's, um, he's, I think he's a little selective in his parts. I think he um, would care about playing grown up Christopher Robin. Um, at the same time, it's from the creators that made Beauty and the Beast, and they flopped that. If you ask me, I know people argue with me about that, and I'll do a, a video about that someday. What's wrong with that movie? But I, I don't, I, the, my problem with Beauty and the Beast is it wasn't true to the what the magic was in the Beauty and the Beast. If they can't hold together what's magical about Winnie the Pooh, I'm out. So I'm really frustrated about that because of what they did. But I'm I'm not counting it out till I know a little bit more about it. I don't know. I have issues sometimes with with uh his imaginary characters coming into the real world the real world. I'd much rather see them take Christopher Robin back to the Hundred Acre Woods. I hope that's what happens. Um, but it's kind of like Tinkerbell coming back to collect hook and uh, and that's what this reminded me of and from hook, collect hook, excuse me, <laughs> to collect uh Peter Pan. Um Having these fantasy characters in the real world, that's fine, but it's uh, you, you need to get them out and take them back to the Enchanted World because that's what we want to see as an audience. My first thought, what do you have? Um, well, first, I'm kind of surprised that you thought Beauty and the Beast wasn't true to the magic of the original because it was pretty much the same movie. Unfortunately, uh, it's not. They, they marketed it that way, but you can you can read my... my uh, Huge um, review of it. I'll even put it in the in the comments on the or in the, would, description, the description say, of this video. I would say out of all the movies, all of the old Disney cartoons that we all loved when we were kids, that they've now turned into live action movies to get us to pay them more money to see these same movies. This one was the closest to the original of all of them. I mean, Pete's Dragon, the Beast? yeah, Pete's Dragon, Cinderella, uh, or whatever they called it. They didn't call it Cinderella. Um, yeah, they did. Uh, did they? Cinderella, yeah. Oh. Ma Ma Maleficent. Well, I had problems uh, with that one too. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought this one was the closest to the story that it could have been. But anyway, that's not a, this is not what this is about. What this is about <laughs> is Christopher Robin. I like that they're doing this instead of doing what they did with Beauty and the Beast and that making the original with live action characters. I like that they're kind of doing a continuation with Christopher Robin grown up, similar to what they're doing with Mary Poppins. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see what happened to Christopher Robin and why all of a sudden now as an adult, these imaginary characters are coming back into his life. So that'll be fun. And also seeing Winnie the Pooh in a live action 
it was just kind of exciting. Winnie the Pooh for me when I was a little kid, when I was a really small kid, you know, sunbeam age child was probably my favorite one of all the cartoons. You know, I loved them all. I loved Piglet. I loved them all. I'm sure that Mo- Piglet. Yeah, he was great. No, Piglet's annoying. You're annoying. You're annoying. <laughs> That's true, but <laughs> so you don't have plush dolls with me. <laughs> <laughs> plush dolls. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> That's Saint Cinema plush dolls coming soon. Um, I agree with you, and and I know you weren't done, but I I love the characters. And here's the thought, though. When I first saw this trailer, same thing I'm feeling now. I wish they were staying true to the original stuffed animal designs that the characters were based off of, not the Disney cartoony part where he has like a red shirt and everything. I know they they it'd be harder to market that movie if it was not true to the cartoon that that uh, the generations are familiar with on the screen. But that's not the way the original stuffed animals look like it. So if this was supposed to be Christopher Robin grown up it'd have been more it'd be more um um heartfelt for me and more endearing endearing if it was the original stuffed animals coming to life instead of this imaginary cartoon character coming into the real world i can see them both working and i can enjoy both of them but I, that's just one little detail i thought pink would have been cool but it wouldn't sell as well i understand that i got it so what you're saying, like at the beginning of winnie the pooh the one we watched they had all the stuffed animals in the, in the nursery and you wanted it to look like the stuffed animal you see at the beginning, not the cartoon character Pooh. Is that what you're saying? No, there's a, the original Pooh character or Pooh uh, design. I'll put a picture right here. Unless I'm totally off the wall, then I'll delete this whole segment, but let me find it real quick. You're talking about the one that's in the book, right? No, not the, that's not in the movies. I think these are the original. Man, never mind. <laughs> this would be freaky as crap if they put this in the movie. <laughs> there you go. This is what they originally look like. <laughs> yeah, I hope Kanga never did look like that. <laughs> so, oh. on uh, on second thought, that'd be kind of a scary movie if these animals came to life. So, yeah, let's keep world the world red world. shirt, big bellied, regular Winnie the Pooh that we're all familiar with. Yeah. I, I withdraw my comments. Yeah, that would be if Tim Burton was directing it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and all the trees would be crooked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I, I I like what they're doing with this. I have a lot of faith in Disney, so. I think this is going to be really exciting. I love the fact that they're bringing my kids the same magic that they brought me when I was a kid. And it'll kind of connect. I feel like it'll connect me to my kids a little bit more when they get to see uh, this um, in a new realm and something that they can appreciate. And my kids, they can watch Winnie the Pooh, but they're so thrown into CGI and all this stuff now that that stuff, you know, old cartoons – it's not magical to them. It's not exactly. It's not magical to, to them at all. So to see this in their, um, I guess their medium, what they're used to, they're going to get a glimpse of what I felt when I was a little kid watching Winnie the Pooh a billion times until the VCR tape went bad and it got all terrible. <laughs> yeah. So I agree, and I and like I said, I'm just, I'm not totally a hundred percent prepared or, or expecting that they got it right because i i worry about disney because they're going to put little twists and things i don't think they fully understand what makes certain things magical and that's and beauty and beast is an example that that's the last title they could have put up there if they put jungle book up there i'd have been on board there's a lot more magic that was captured from jungle book than beauty and the beast maleficent and it was in the middle but beauty and the beast they they dropped the ball on a lot of the key things that made that one special winnie the pooh to me it's it's an attachment to your childhood. I cry. I still do. I cry when I watch Winnie the Pooh. If I get to the end of any Winnie the Pooh movie, they always have that little scene at the end where Christopher is, or sorry, where, where Christopher is yeah, telling Winnie the Pooh that he's got to go to school and there's going to be things changing. He's preparing him. And that I have a hard time with change in my life anyway. Um, but there's uh, that that horrifying feeling of your your childhood and that that escapist reality disappearing that you can't go back to the hundred acre woods you can't go to hogwarts you can't go to a galaxy far far away that there's a point where you have to 
grow up and cast aside childish things that I have a hard time with that. And, and the scene that said every movie where Winnie the Pooh is sitting there at that little bridge, just sitting there, just waiting for Christopher to come back. And now he's going to venture into London or wherever to talk to Christopher as an adult. That'll be kind of interesting. If they, if they tag that and if they hook me correctly, I'm going to be in tears when that happens. Cause I always get shaken up when I watch that in the movies and in multiple movies, they did that. So it could be great. It could be emotional. It could uh, rip in my heart. It could just make me break down in the theater or it could just piss me off. If they lose, if they lose me with the, the one part that the one aspect of the story that was always a magical thing to me. And that's having these characters in a real world. That was a part that was your childhood and your imagination that you went on all of these adventures with them just uh dissolving into your into your adulthood that you grow up and grow out of it that's the death of these characters but they're still alive in your imagination the back of your mind waiting for you oh it's a beautiful thing so a couple things one looking at the background in your video uh, i couldn't imagine <laughs> you want to put ever that, that you couldn't get a hard time putting away childish things but <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> I mean, you do have a Voltron and a Batman right up at the top of your shelves here. But you're right. Disney could do a lot of things that I would forgive, but screwing up Winnie the Pooh is not one of them. So if they screw up Winnie the Pooh, I can tell you that it is, it is an unforgivable sin to me because it is such an integral part of my childhood. And if they screwed that up, I don't know if I could ever forgive them for doing that. So right. I think I'm not the only one to think that as a 30, near 37 year old man. <laughs> but I will say that that is one that I think Disney would not want to mess with because it's so magical. And because it's so magical, I mean, it, it's gotta be one of their top seller, uh, you know, toy lines of all time. I mean, everybody, I, I can't think of a generation since me who doesn't know and understand Winnie the Pooh. Everybody right. knows Winnie the Pooh is it's, it's almost like it's not quite, but it's, almost akin to Mickey Mouse. Everybody knows Pooh and Tigger. Right. I mean, look at how many movies have come out since the original Winnie the Pooh that have completely gone off the charts. The Tigger movie. I mean, mm -hmm. so yeah, don't screw with Winnie the Pooh, Disney. Don't <laughs> I agree. I am, I'm, I'll be done with these uh, live action remakes if they mess up this. If, if they completely forgot about Winnie the Pooh sitting there waiting for Christopher Robin to come back from school, then I'm out. They 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 don't get it. They forgot. If they if these are the same executives that are preparing these movies or, and are putting them into development, and they forgot what was awesome about them in the first place, they're just trying to figure out an angle to put it on the big screen to sell a buck to the millennials or the newer kids. Then I'm out. I'm done. I'm not done. I'll still go to the ones I care about, Lion King, for example. But uh, I'll, I'll lose a lot of faith in them. And next time I'm going to a trailer and they say, from those that brought you the Winnie the Pooh massacre, I'll be like, yep, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> the Winnie the Pooh massacre. I like that. <laughs> it's just be like a bunch of fluff flying all over the room and a bunch of fabric and cotton balls everywhere. The Winnie the I'm Pooh massacre. <laughs> I'm interested to find out where the setting of this movie takes place. Does it take place in London or do they go back to the Hundred Acre Wood? And if they do, either way, what other characters are going to pop up? I would assume that all the major characters are going to come up at one point or another. In which case and again, if they mess that up, if they mess up Chris or uh, um, Tigger, or if they mess up um, Rabbit, those are the two keys. I mean, who cares about Winnie the Pooh? Or sorry, who cares about Piglet other than you? And <laughs> Owl is pretty easy, but like Rabbit is one that they can mess up. Kangaroo are pretty easy too, but <laughs> Tigger and and um, Rabbit are the ones that bounce off of, of Winnie the Pooh. All the great stories about Winnie the Pooh have either one of them on, on both sides. And I'm really hoping, well, I'm not really hoping, but you think that Eeyore has committed suicide by now? <laughs> I think he's still sitting under his little uh, stick, his stick uh, hut. Because I got to tell you, he was, he was borderline. <laughs> he's either suicidal, he's got to be suicidal by now. It'll be interesting. Maybe he's on his meds. Maybe they got some meds in the I don't know. With, uh, with today's world, with uh, between bullying and cyber attacks and depression and, and how big of a, a deal those things are for, for kids even now, I'm, I'm sure they're going to just, just loosen them up a little bit. 
yeah, we'll see. But I'm I'm excited for it. I mean, it's these money grabs are really effective because I go to all of them. <laughs> playing yeah. the whole way. You know, I'm always doing ah, this is just another money grab. And you know what? And then I give them my money. So I want to hear the theme too. I want to hear the the winning. Not I don't have to see the dancing on the page of the book where you're going around the map of everyone's house, but I want to hear the theme when uh, when they when they go into the story. Like the whole. Or if they go to Hundred Acre Hundred Acre Woods. No, just the main part, the Winnie the Pooh, that part. You actually want them to sing? I think it would be. No, nice no, just the music, just the music. Okay, okay yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be good. It'll be exciting to see what they do with it. I'm excited that it's a Christopher Robin now, not a remake of the same stuff to try to, you know, capture us again. And this is something new. So that's going to be fun. I agree. So Disney, don't screw it up. We're, uh, we're running out of, well, I'm running out of patience with you, but this is like a critical moment for Josh. And so I've already had a few, uh, you've had a few strikes with me from Maleficent and Beauty and the Beast. This one you can't blow. I'm sure you guys are really worried about my opinion, but it's uh, it's there already. So anyway, any other thoughts, Josh? I mean, I think that they better listen to us with our 29 subscribers. So, <laughs> so, so if you want to add to our arsenal of impact that Disney executives may have some attention someday towards us, subscribe below and click on like and all that stuff. Share our video and see if anyone else likes. Does anyone else care about Winnie the Pooh besides Josh and I? I'm really passionate about it. I'm serious. I cry at these movies. And I can tell you all about what scenes or which ones are really meaningful and hit me in different ways. But I care. So Winnie the Pooh means a lot to me because I cannot, obviously, I can't let go of my childhood and I refuse to. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that you probably should have just not said out loud. But that's okay. <laughs> all right. You know, this we're not, not a confessional episode, but that's okay. I mean, you know, we're not judging here. And, you know, I don't know if you ever, at 11 years old, there were any more cool like, stuffed animals to have in your head. But regardless, <laughs> the sentiment is there. I agree with it. So, All right. Okay. Well, Win the Pooh coming soon. And we will ch definitely be checking it out. And we will definitely be doing a review of it. So let us know what you think. Put in your comments below. Like, share, subscribe, whatever you're going to do. But <laughs> let's hear what you guys have to say about it. Because maybe I'm the only one and I'm kind of a weirdo. I already know I'm a weirdo. But. Am I alone on this, on this, on this ledge? I don't know. Anyway. Right. You, you might be oh, alone. No, if I watch the movie, I will have a, I will be in tears. I can't watch the for the original without crying at the end. Or the sequel, The Grand Adventure of Winnie the Pooh, they did the same thing. I can't, I can't watch it. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, well, thanks for listening, YouTube. I really appreciate you being here for me. <laughs> but been fun and we will catch you next time on saints on cinema